guys just saw in that clip right there, we're going to be doing a three color design today. This is the first time that I'm going to attempt this. So if you're interested on how it came out, if you're interested on the steps that I went through to get this done, stick around and I'll walk you through it. We're going to be doing a three color screen printing design today. It's actually four colors, but one of the colors is black and we're going to be doing them on black shirts. So we're only going to have to do three colors in all. Uh, by, by using the black shirt, you don't have to screen print that color. So it's actually going to work out for us. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be using four screens. All right, so why four screens for three colors? Uh, the reason is because one of them is going to be gold, one of them is going to be silver, and the other one is going to be red. And then the, the top one right here, we're going to use as a chest piece. Uh, the chest piece is going to be two colors. Uh, I only have um, 110 and 155, so I'm going to be using two 110 and then two 155s. Uh, before we started, before I started recording, I had to clean my screens. They had emulsion on them, and all I did was just I just put some emulsion cleaner on there, and then I used a scrubbing pad, and then I used my high pressure washer to clean it off. So all I did was you can't really tell, but this has emulsion cleaner on it. Um, I have the emulsion cleaner over there in the corner. It comes in a gallon that I ordered from Tolling Solution. That's who I ordered it from because I know people will probably ask in the comments, uh, where do I get my supplies? Um, right now I'm everywhere. I've got from Nevertheless, which where I got this from, and then I've also got from Total Ink Solutions where I'm trying to ink for the first time from them also. So that's what we use here. And then we're gonna be using, again, the emulsion. This emulsion um, is from Nevertheless right here, if you can see that. Nevertheless is where I got this one from. Um, uh, the reason I ordered for them the second time is because whenever I ordered this kit, it came with a little sample and what I did was I liked it so I went ahead and bought it again. So we're going to be using this from them and then when we get into the inks later on in the video, I'll show you the inks that I'm going to use. So if you don't know or if you're new to screen printing like I am, um, I've learned a lot in the last couple months with this stuff. Um, but if you don't know, screen printing is a process. It's not to where you just put the image into the program, click send. It cuts it, you weed it, you press it. Um, that's, that's not the process when it comes to this. So the first thing we have to do is we have to put emulsion on this right here. And once we put the emulsion on here, we have to put it into a dark box. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is my dark box and how I came up with mine. Uh, whenever you get into screen printing, it's, it's going to be expensive if you go all out. Um, I'm just starting off. I'm trying to get the feel for it. So everything that I'm doing, I'm basically making my own stuff. I made my own washout booth. And then I made my own bench for my screen printing setup. And then whenever I had it, what I did was I just put a door right here. I, I closed it in. And then if I open it up, you'll see that I have rails right here to where I can just slide my screens in there. And then when I'm done, I just basically I just close it up and I'll leave it there till tomorrow. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through the process of putting the emulsion on one of these screens right here. Uh, hopefully uh, out of this video, it's, it's probably going to be a lengthy video. I'm going to show you from start to beginning everything that I'm going to be doing except creating the art. I've already created the art, so I'm not going to take you through the process of how I created the art to get ready. To but I will show you the program that I use to separate the colors. I want to give a big shout out to House of Beast. Um, he's helped me out a lot in this process. I asked him what program he was using to separate his colors from watching his videos. He told me he was using simple steps or simple steps, however you say it. And then I went ahead and bought the bundle that came with three different programs. Uh, which is a plug-in for Corel Draw. So uh, and I want to say thank you to House of Beast for always taking the time to answer my questions whenever I ask them something. So appreciate you, man. So I have nothing fancy. I don't have a setup with a, with a board or anything that's fancy that will hold it up in place whenever I do mine. I basically use a stool. I put it on there. I zip it up. Then once I get done with it, I just stick it inside this box right here. But the one thing that, that I do, I don't know if you really have to. I've heard people say you don't have to. And I've... And I've learned that you do have to, you have to be in a dark room when you do it. So if you look back here in the back right here, I have this lamp right here. It has the light bulb for the dark room. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to shut these lights off. Here's my emulsion right here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour some inside this. Since we're doing four screens, I'm going to pour a good amount in there. Once I got it, I just close the lid back up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my screen. So like I said, nothing fancy. All I do, hopefully you can see this. All right, so all I do is I do, from what I've learned is you do the front first and then you do the back. So I'm gonna do the front right here. So we're just gonna do this, put it on here like here. Tip it forward, 
And then you just go in one motion. Once you get to the top, tilt it back. In a sawing motion. Wow. So that's what I've learned. The way I've seen people do it. You got a different way that you do it. Go ahead and leave some some comments down below. Let me know. So we're just gonna go ahead. We're gonna speed through these. Okay. All right, so we got all four screens coated. They're inside the box now. So all I'm gonna do, just close it up. All right, so we got the screens with the emulsion on them. We got them inside the box that I have down there. I don't have a designated spot to put them in a dark room with some fans. So I just use what I got. Um, it works for me. I gotta leave them in there a little bit longer. If you have a dark room with some fans, I guess you could leave them in there for about an hour or two hours maybe. But my plan tonight isn't to print these and go burn those screens tonight. It's just to, I'll take you through the process on what I do and what I use. So usually um, whenever I do this, I use Adobe Illustrator. And since I've only been using one color, I haven't had to use any separation stuff at all. No special programs or anything to separate the colors because I've always done either white or black. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to open up Corel Draw. We're going to open up a new document. Uh, with that being said, I already have... The film that I use is 13 by 17. So we look here, I already have the width and the height set. All I gotta do is just come and open it. And there it is right there. So with Corel Draw, you're able to use plugins for it. If you look right here to the left side, you're gonna see the TRW Design Wizard. I'm still trying to learn how to use it. Matt from the Rhinestone World. I appreciate you, man, 100%. He's gonna get with me and he's supposed to show me how to use this. I've been messing with it here and there, trying to learn it. Uh, it's, it's another program, it's, you gotta learn it, you know what I mean? So we're gonna get in there whenever I have, a t whenever I have time and Matt has time, we're gonna get together. Uh, we're, he's gonna teach me uh, basically what he does. I copy some of the stuff that he does on his live. What, um, while he's doing it, while, I, while he's doing it there, I'm trying to do it here. And for me, he goes too fast for me, so um, I'm gonna leave it up to the professional. And then once he has time or we both have time, we can get together and learn it. But appreciate you, Matt, thank you. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the design that we're going to be using. This is it right here. And all I'm going to basically do is grab it from the folder, drop it into place. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to line this up into the middle of the film. So you basically come up here, go to align and distribute. And then you got center to page, center horizontally, vertically. We click that. It's going to center it. Or you could just do it either one at a time. Um, you come here. You can add this right here and it'll come to the side over here. Then you have it here, I will click that. And then if I move it out of the way a little bit, you'll see if I click this one, it's gonna center it horizontally. If I click this one, it'll center it vertically. And then we're set, we got that right there where we want it in the center of the page. All right, so now that we got this centered, we got it the way that we want. The next thing I'm gonna do is, so the next question is how do I separate my colors? Uh, the way I separate my colors is I come over here to advanced tools and I, under advanced tools, you're going to see I ordered uh, simple seps, simple seps, simple seps overprint, and simple sep raster. So those three right there I got in a bundle, and I think it was like $140 for all three of these. I don't have any of these other ones right here, uh, but I do have these. I don't know how to use any of the other ones yet, but I do know somewhat, somewhat how to use simple seps. And the good thing about it is. Uh, if I was trying to do this with Adobe Illustrator, I would have to do each color and then separate separate it myself. The good thing about this right here is it does it for me. So I'm gonna click Simple Steps. I'm gonna wait for it to load. It's gonna ask that I, it already, it's gonna tell me that I already have the latest version. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and I'm gonna drop it over here. And then I'm gonna go to Color Management, right? All right, so bear with me when we do this right here. Like I said, this is going to be the first time I've done it. Um, I have I have messed with this. I just have never filmed when I've done this. I've, I've done it. I've messed with it, and I've done some images, put them on there, selected the selected the palette, and then after the palette, went to one click conversion. It converted it. Then went to separation, and then it converted it. But being that I'm recording, I know it's going to mess up, and it's going to tell me do this or do that. So the first thing that you want to do before you can even uh, create a selected palette is you have to if I click it it's gonna tell me please select an object which you would like to create a palette so obviously 
if you don't if you don't select anything it's not going to show colors because obviously there's nothing clicked so what we're going to do here is i'm just going to come in here and click this image so it's going to click the whole thing and then we click create selection palette um, before when I would do that it wouldn't do that I mean I don't know if it's because I've been like I said I've been practicing with it maybe that's why it's doing it uh, show color names we could do that and it'll do this unnamed so as you can see we've got one two three four five colors right and like I said this is going on a black shirt so what I'm gonna do is gonna take this black and I'm guessing that the white because I know there's no white in here I'm guessing the white is the background so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two and I'm going to replace them with black. But I want to have make sure you have all these at zero because you know um, black is zero, 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 zero all the way across the board whenever it comes to black. So now we got this down to four colors. But as we know, like I told you guys, we're only going to be doing three, right? So um, we got the red, the gold the silver and then the black is going to be the outline of the mask if you remember what the mask looked like right so we got that going so now I think we go click one All right so now that we got now that we got this done we're gonna come over here and objects color conversion we're gonna convert to Pantone colors I believe that's what I'm supposed to do so we'll see. All right, so that's what that's what I was supposed to do. I was I was worried if that was going to be the right thing. So I'm like I said, I'm still learning. So we converted it to Pantone colors. It says 245 objects processed, 245 fills, and zero outlines replaced. Okay, so now we got that right. We got our colors. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your colors are on here, as long as you have. I could put blue hair in here, because uh, all films are going to print out black. When you print them out black, it all depends on what color you want to put on the screens, I guess, right? So once we got that done, we're going to come up here to separations. Um, I'm going to use their registration marks. I have. I do have registration marks. I just haven't made them yet. I do have registration marks on Adobe Illustrator. Um, I'm not too sure how to find them to put them on here. So we got um, registration marks. We're not doing an underbase, so we should be good from what I know. So as I'm using this right here, and if anybody uses simple steps, um, leave some comments down below. Let me know if I'm doing something that uh, you do a lot different and it's a lot easier. Let me know, because I know this program right here, is, from what I've seen on their videos, they make it look really cool. But they talk about a whole bunch of stuff that I have no idea what they're talking about. So I'm just trying to learn from the, from watching people that use it. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to come out here to generate separations. So hopefully it does what it's supposed to. Yep. So it's processing the work. You'll see the nodes right here. Uh, they're flickering. And then once it gets complete, we should have um, images that are separate. All right, so we, all right, so we should be good. Everything should be separated. We come back here to page one. You're going to see it has the whole image from the beginning, but we don't have to print that because if we go ahead and print this, all it's going to do is print this black. I guess if we were doing an underbase, we could print this and it will be white, but um, we're not going to print that page. So here's page two, and it tells us we got two of five pages. So we got this one right here, which is going to be the spears. Those are going to be a brilliant silver that I ordered from Total Ink Solutions mm -hmm. and right, then if I click the next one right here you're gonna see this is gonna be the gold we're gonna use for this right here we're gonna use that brilliant gold um, once we get down there once we go back and we burn the screens and everything I'll show you the the, the ink that we're gonna be using um, it looks pretty cool so I hope it works out for me uh, so this is gonna be gold and if you look in between the helmet right here everything all the white lines that you see in the helmet are gonna be black because it's gonna be on a black t-shirt black t-shirts and black hoodies and then the last one that we got here is this is all going to be red so the hair is going to be red and all this is going to be red so um for like i said I'm, i don't know i've never used this program this is the first time i'm going to use it and i bought it specifically for 
um, this first design right here and this first design is going to pay off the three programs that it came with so that's cool as we saw I was able to put my Adobe Illustrator file in there I don't I don't think you could put a JPEG in there and then separate the colors because that would be crazy but if you can I don't know uh, leave some comments down below let me know um, but what I did was I made this image on I made this image on Adobe Illustrator so here's here I'll show you right here here's the image that they sent me they said this is what they wanted um, this was they did send me the SVG they did send me the Adobe Illustrator file for this but uh, my me I wouldn't be able to do this I have a four color station I have a I have a four color press with one station so if we look on here we got red so that's one color then we got silver that's two we got white that's three we got gold that's four uh, we got yellow that's five we got black that's six and that's just what I see I might have missed something so we got six colors oh and then we got I could do the, the hair the same color as the names but then you got that other color inside the hair you got this gold and then you got a darker gold mm -hmm. so you have a whole bunch of different colors in here that I wouldn't be able to do because I only have four colors so I when I saw this I was like let me create something and see if they like it something in this realm right here that see if they like it so this is what I came up with see there it is so this is what I came up with right here and they loved it so perfect I was like good this is a whole lot easier for me because it's there's no blending of colors I don't know how to do the blending yet I don't know how to do the half tones I don't know how to do none of that so this is what like I said this is what we're gonna be doing right here the gold as you see gold is simple the red is simple the silver is gonna be simple and the good thing about this is being that if you look at this image here uh, with the black that is in the helmet it actually leaves like a contour around the the mask and the hair so for me just starting off I don't have to worry about lining these up perfectly you know what I mean uh, being that I don't have to line these up perfectly is gonna work out for me tremendous because um, I can line this up and even if it's like an eighth of an inch to the left or to the right it's not gonna matter you won't be able to tell so um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna print these out All right so y'all saw how simple that was right there now the next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead take my computer to the printer so that we could print these off I'm not sure if I have to save these into an Adobe Illustrator file and then print them or if I could just print them straight from this program and then onto the onto the film so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna set this up over there and we're gonna check this out and hopefully everything goes good we'll print out the three different color films and then we'll be ready to burn our screens all right, so we're going to be using the Canon Pixima 6820. Um, the reason I went with this one, I saw a couple videos on it, and people said that it printed really, really black. So I went ahead and I went with it, and I haven't had no problems when I burned my screens yet. So um, in all, it's not a bad printer. Um, I just use it right now just for printing film. And the good thing about this is it could print anything from a letter all the way up to, as you can see right there, the 13 by 17 inch film. Uh, remember, whenever you put your film in there, there's a sticky side and a shiny side if you don't know what side the sticky side is lick your finger touch it whatever side gives that white uh, I guess we could say like a white fade that's the side that you want to print on if you print on the glossy side the ink is just gonna be slimy so make sure you don't do that I'm telling you because I did it look right here when I tried to print this it had the registration marks on the side of it and it was going outside the screen outside of the film so what it was telling me was that um, it wasn't able to print it um, and now that I'm trying to print it right now, this is what it's telling me. I come here. Um, I don't know what I have to do. I've, I've messed with it. We're going to print those three right there. Uh, I got the 13 by 19. I kept saying 17, but it's 13 by 19 inch paper. When I go to print it, it does this. I don't know why. So um, instead of printing from here, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to close this down. I'm going to close that printer down I'm just gonna come here I'm gonna save it as a Adobe Illustrator file I'm gonna name it separation name it separation drop it onto my desktop just hit OK and OK 
And then here's the file for separation. Adobe Illustrator. I got it. I drop it in there. And now we should be good. So here's the 13. Here's the 13 by 19 inch paper right here. Here's all three files that we're going to print. Right here. So there's one, two, and three. Hopefully this will print. We'll find out. So we'll look at it. We'll go ahead and do go ahead and print. Uh, as you can see here, it's doing the same thing. If I come here, I can pick the 13. We can pick the 13, but we gotta switch printers. We're not using the sawgrass. We are using the Canon. So we're there. We're printing one of three pages. We're going to be coming down to the 13 by 19, and then we should be good. So there's page one, there's page two, and there's page three. It looks like they're all gonna fit, so we should be good. All right, so here it is. This is going to be the silver right here. These actually came out nice. Here's the silver, and then we put the gold on top of that. This is going to be the gold color. The black and the gold, and then we have the red. And they all line up just the way they're supposed to. All right, so now that we got the films printed, I'll burn those screens tomorrow. And then I'm just waiting for the shirts to come in and then we'll start start pressing them. They should be here tomorrow. I get my shirts from Jiffy and they usually come within two days. All right, so we're back in the garage now. What, the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these screens out one at a time. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to burn each image on there. Once we get that done, uh, we'll wash them out, see how they come out. And if everything turns out good, we'll be able to test one out and see how it looks. All right, so here we go. Here's a screen right here. It came out good. So... What I'm going to do now is what I do, this is the way I do it, um, I just put it on here, center it, once I get it in place, I don't tighten it, I don't tighten it all the way down, I just tighten it enough to where it's secure, and then I'm going to take this image with the, image, with the print side facing up, and then I'm going to line it up on my registration marks. Then I got some tape right here. Put some tape on the edges. All right, so I'm not I'm not too sure how far that got. Uh, my camera died, but look, we got we got this first one on here. So this first one, as you can see, is ready to go. Alright, so as you can see, this is what I'm using right here. It just got, you can't see, but it has the halogen light on top. Um, this is just a PVC pipe. It came with this 4-in-1 press. Uh, that's what I've been using. It's been working just fine. I do it for about 4 minutes. Um, if anybody has any suggestions of different times, I don't have the little emulsion calculator. I haven't printed that out yet, so I just go off of about 3-4 to four minutes. So, uh, but I did pick this up right here. This. I just got it from work. Uh, we we're getting ready to throw it away, um, so I just I took it. Um, so I did do that, and then I cut it down to size, and then with this piece, fits right inside of it. 
Then I have a piece of glass that I got at Home Depot. Turn our timer on and all I gotta do is plug this in. So here we go. So all the screens are done. I'm going to take them and put them outside for a little bit so they can dry off. Once they dry off, we're going to give it our test print. All right, so as you can see, we got the screens on the press right now. Uh, this, this one right here is going to be gold. This one is going to be red. And this one is going to be silver. All right, so the lighting in here ain't the best. But we're going to be using, this one right here is going to be, this silver right here is brilliant silver. I ordered this from Total Ink Solutions. This one right here is gold. It's a brilliant gold. It's also from Total Ink Solutions. This one right here is the red, bright red. It came with the, the setup that I got when I first bought it. And then the last color that we're gonna be using is black, but black is not actually the color. Black is gonna be used with the garment. So whenever we press the gold on here, uh, what's gonna happen after that is the outline is gonna form with the black t-shirt. So uh, saving us from doing an extra step. All right, so the next thing I need to do before we start these, if you look at the screens here, I need to put tape in here to keep the ink in the right place. I don't want the ink going everywhere. And then once I do that, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a test piece. We're going to use this right here. We're going to make sure that our image is lined up. Once we get it lined up, then we'll start pressing the t-shirt. So let me get, let me prep all of this here. Let me get the ink on the screens and then we'll go ahead and start. <laughs> So that first one came out good. Everything looks good. So I got my flash dryer on. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna throw the flash dryer over it. So again, I'm just letting it. There's the gold, so far so good. Here's the last color, here. So I'm gonna on this. So I'm gonna this frame. We'll see. All right, so there it is, the first multicolor design right there. Three, I say four because of the black inside the helmet. But technically, it is a three color design. We got the silver, the gold, and the red hair. So this actually looks good, it does pop out. I didn't put an underbase under the red, but I'm pretty sure if I did, this red would pop a whole lot more um, but like I said I'm only using three screens uh, this looks good but if any of you guys caught on um, this was supposed to be the names were supposed to be red but whenever I pressed it the first time um, I couldn't see the names so I didn't like it the names didn't pop out so here's what it looked like when I did my first test print just like this so here's how it looks, and as, as you can see, uh, you can't even see the names. I only did one pass on each color, um, but if, as you can see, the names right here, you couldn't see them. So what I went ahead and did uh, was change out the names for this chrome color, and it actually came out really good. So we're ready to press these shirts, and we'll see how they come out. All right, so these designs are ready to go. The sh All right, so as you can see, we put the new design on the wall back there. I'm pretty excited about it. It's my first uh, three color design. I was gonna say four because of the black, but we did our first three color design. We, our screens are set up. We, we got everything registered. We're ready to go. So the shirts that I'm gonna be using are gonna be next level t-shirts. These are really soft shirts, so I like, I'm like. i gonna start using these. I was always using the Gildan brand shirts, but uh, I'm gonna, if someone's gonna pay for something and they're gonna be wearing my product, I'm gonna put something good on their back. So, All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start screen printing these shirts. Hi. 
Alright, so as you can see, I only have a one station right here. So what I do is I set up a little rhythm right here. So the rhythm that I go with is I I put a shirt behind me on this box. I put this here, and then when I get done here, I roll it over here to the box so it can dry that shirt. And then I keep going with this one. So there's another coat of red. I'll bring it back across until I can get a bigger press. So for now we're just going with this four color one station, um, doing what I can with it, making the best out of it. So is what it is. We're just gonna keep on pressing. So that's it for the t-shirts. I got them all complete. All I gotta do is package them up now so I can take them and deliver them. Uh, here's the back of the shirt right here. And then here's the front of the shirt, the way it came out. So as, like I was telling you, this is basically four colors, but this color, the black that's inside the, the outline of this, uh, we didn't have to do that because of the t-shirt, but we have this, the silver, the red, and the gold. And then in the front, we had the two colors, which were the red and the gold. So for the job, I needed five screens. Um, as we can tell, I can only hold four at a time. So whenever I did the chest piece, I had to go back and clean one of the screens so that I could reuse it for that. Right, so whenever I ordered this ink from Total Ink Solutions on their website, it says it's best used with 110 mesh. So luckily I already had two screens that are 110, so I was able to use those and I didn't have to buy no more. I've already cleaned the screens. Um, they're ready for the next job. I'm gonna put them away and then wait for whatever is gonna come next. So I don't have to wait and then have to worry about cleaning them or getting the ink off of them. I already did all that. All right, so the only thing I have left to clean is the platen right here. Um, they've told me about some tape that you can order that you can put on there that, so that you can just peel it off when you're done. I, I ordered a sample pack, but it hasn't come in yet. Uh, but for this right here, what I use is the lacquer thinner. They've told me about this stuff right here. So this is the stuff that I've been going with and just pour it on there. You wait a little bit and it wipes right off. So uh, with the paper, it'll save you some time. You don't have to do all this, but it is what it is. And then again, everybody that screen printing has their own ways of doing things. This is the way I do it. I think for the first time doing a multicolored job on the screen printing, it came out pretty good. I could have did this with vinyl. It would have been just as easy because none of it's overlapping. But I wanted to try to screen print it. And I think it came out a whole lot better than it would have done with vinyl. So I think for my first time, it came out pretty good. All right, so that's the process that I went through whenever I do my screen printing. If there's something that I did that you guys could say that I could do differently, uh, leave the comments down below. I'm willing to take any information that you guys give me because again, you guys know that I've been following me from the beginning that um, I'm just getting into this. This is my first three color design. Any information that you give me is better than no information. Hopefully you learned something from this video. If not, hey, again, thanks for watching. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. And until next time, keep pressing. <laughs>